New parts day. Dan here, DD Speed Shop. So where we left it last, as per usual, I was hacking stuff together. No, so I was trying to line up this bell housing to the center line of the crank so we can put this overly priced awesome transmission behind this motor. Now the problem being, we had to get a set of offset dowel pins to make my math work, which man, that's something else. They came in the mail. Now, the way these work is they're going to move the bell housing uh, 14 thousandths of an inch. Now, I can show this knot. See, they're kind of both touching as we roll. The one side kind of comes up. So obviously they're not straight through their offset. Now, there's also a set of set screws in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna knock the bell housing off, pull these dowel pins out. We then have to measure, go dead center, drill a hole, tap it, because I guess that's what's gonna lock these into place. I don't know, but uh, so yeah, next up, that off, dowel pin out. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna, it, it, it says uh, just under half an inch, whatever the actual spec is. But essentially that's gonna go in all the way. You see how oh, there's that second little, uh, whatever, milled out piece. That's where the set screw wants to land. So we'll center this in the hole, put that back, mark it with a marker, drill and tap. Just a little to cast, no big deal. And Essentially, that should lock it into place. Now, before we lock it into place, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this, these dowels in, and they should move. You can see in the end, there's room for a big flathead. So we'll put that in there. We'll adjust whatever way we think it's gotta go, which in my case, it has to go up and uh, over to the, the left side or the driver's side, whatever you wanna call it, which then we'll redial indicate, and assuming we're within spec, we can then tighten up the set screws, and then these won't move, this can all come apart. Then we can, oh, I don't have the right socket. Damn, we gotta put on the flywheel properly. We gotta set the clutch, we gotta align all those things. And guess what, Mer's here today. So, while well, he's back home, I might have to call him over and help us lug this transmission all together on his first day in. Oh, I gotta set up the clutch and all that, or the uh, release bearing. There's a lot of stuff I've never done here uh, before, so it might be a two-parter. Um, for myself, we'll do it all in one video. I'm rambling. But I wanna get the transmission all together and I'd like to get it set in here because the motor mounts aren't changing. But we do have to modify the transmission mount. But by the end of this video, which will probably be tomorrow, I'm hoping motor and transmission will be in permanently as a stick shift. How sweet would that be? So I jumped ahead a little bit because I wanna see if I can figure this out. Um, so this is the new offset dowel. That is the hole that is drilled and tapped with our little set screw in there. I put it in there just finger tight. But look at that, mint. A little sketchy drilling in the cast, but it's all fine. Um, I rolled it around. I kind of put a mark that I believe is about the high side. So I just kind of put it in about the direction I think it should go now. It's supposed to be kind of a looser fit. It's definitely a little on the tight side, which you can file it all down. But I thought, you know what? If I can get it pretty close, because I mostly had to go up, I might even just move it one more time. I didn't try jamming a screwdriver in there, but I probably could twist it a little bit. And we'll just match side to side, and hopefully we'll get it pretty close. Because again, we're seven thou is the limit, and we were eight thou uh, off this way. So barely, barely, barely and we really just gotta go up. So I think that's our big issue. Now, of course I've done the easy side to film. I'll have to move this thing around and I'll, I'll show you this side. Pretty simple, but uh, yeah, it's gonna be what's gonna be. Uh, I did clean the surface. It wasn't too bad before, but just to make sure there's no issues there. And uh, I didn't touch this really, other than that. Um, we should be able to leave that in the exact same spot. Not that it really matters. Pretty sure it should be fine. And once those dowels are locked in, I think it's set, and it should be set forevermore. Because I believe, well, I don't know. I don't know if we're adjusting the bell housing to the motor or the motor to the bell housing. Like they're both cast pieces, obviously. So I don't know if maybe we're just trying to make them both work together or what. But at least this setup should be good. So all I did was I kind of eyeballed what I thought the center was of the hole, um, up and down this way. 
the next thing I did, because the dowel is going to go all the way into this you know, end, whatever you want to call it, little mark. So, and when I put it on, I did the measuring, it was all the same. So I put that about there, the nice mark where that's got to be. I kind of simply followed it down, which gave us our spot. I don't want to lose this, so I will put it where I will lose it. Now, drilling. You probably could uh, just give this a quick grind real quick. So maybe a flat spot to start, but, and maybe don't have it hanging. Oops, we drop down immediately. So we got our hole drilled. Hopefully it's uh, quasi straight. Looks good. Good-ish. Clean that out. Now we have our tap, which I should actually clean off. I don't have a little uh, a handle for this thing, so we're gonna use a crest wrench because this Kresky fixes all. So kind of just get her somewhat lined up. This isn't, I mean, I guess it's somewhat crucial, but it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just holding in a dowel. This is a pain having it hanging. Just get the first few threads cut. Gentle, gentle. Man, the pressure is on. Cards on the table. I ran this once and I was very wrong. So I can already, I can't wait for the comments that are in the video that I've already uploaded, edited. I'm just gonna deal with it. I, th I think I was 180 out. I put the distributor in 180 out. I was trying to raise the bell housing up and to the, to the driver's side when in fact I need to bring it down and to the passenger side, I think. So what I've managed to do is I think, I got this thing like perfect. It is an hour later. But uh, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna set up the camera right on this micro or uh, gauge, which works as you can see. So we're all lined up and we'll, uh, I'll just show you. Okay, so probably hard to see on camera here, unfortunately, but we'll put a little mark in black. So you better see that's zero. I'll grab my ranch. Sorry, mark zero at the top. These are my old measurements, 10, 28, and 18, I believe. So we'll give her a quarter spin. Ugh. Just right there, which is zero. Yeah, we've seen it, we've seen it, we're still good. Give another quarter spin. Oh, is that good enough or a little more? Just a scotch more. Ah, we're in the ballpark. We see we're right on zero still. Give another quarter turn. That might have been a little much. Eh, we went a little past it, but zero. We'll give her another quarter. We're back to zero and it's zero again. So, uh, zero minus zero is zero, zero minus zero is zero. She's centered. Now it screws up. Uh, Tramac transmission, this is for you. Hopefully during the warranty process, this helps. Okay, so we're on the bench. We got a few things to do tonight. We ran into a few snafus, story of my life. Um, I just was going over the throw bearing. I was looking at it. And it looks like there's a bit of a whammo, and in turn, there is. Now this is not, nothing rides on this, so I'll just kind of clean that up, it should be fine. The idea is this is gonna fit at the back of the transmission, has a little support thing, kind of holds it, and then we have a bunch of shims. We gotta do a little measuring. Whether we do it today or tomorrow, I'm not too sure, but, so that's fine. Now, clutch. So we'll get this probably all aligned tonight. Uh, I'll show you how to do all that. It's very simple. You gotta put the pilot, a little bushing in the 
crank itself. Um, I do have the socket. We got to take the bell housing out and we'll torque down the flywheel. So that's not going to go anywhere. We should be able to get the clutch on. So that'll be locked into place. So that'll be good. Then we can get the bell housing back on. Now, the problem we're going to run into, and it's this is the old the way she goes. So this top one, there's two lines. This top one is going to be your bleed. You can see it's got like a brake fitting on it. This bottom is going to be your feed. What happens is when you step on the clutch, it's going to put fluid in here, which will expand this, which will engage the clutch. That's just how it's going to work. Uh, again, there's some measurements we got to do for spacers, which we can do no problem once we get it all together. The issue we're going to run into, I don't have the clutch pedal just yet. It's still, uh, well, hasn't even shipped yet. The clutch pedal is going to have the line that feeds this, which you're like, okay, that's no big deal. The problem is this is going to be inside here like that. Well, I guess it depends. I'll do a little math, but I, I'm going to have to get in there and, and run the line in. So what I'm thinking I might do is tomorrow go to the hydraulic shop and just get a, a line just this length made. And then I'll put one on here so they can both hang out like that, right? Well, two of them. Instead of having this one just has like a, a bleeder on it, I'll make another one and I'll just have a union. And then we'll, when the, the actual pedal comes in, we'll just join it. So it'll be whatever, eight or 10 inches longer than it should be, but won't really be an issue. So that is kind of where we're at. Once it's all together, then we got to decide. So this thing has a few options as to where you want the shifter. You can put it here. You can flip it 180 so the shifter becomes forward. And I think you can put it there as well, to be honest. Not really 100%. I gotta do a little looking. Oh man. I kinda just wanna do this. I almost just want it on the bench. It's like the nicest thing I own. So that's gonna be pretty freaking wicked. I don't know if I showed anything or not, but I mean, all these things, it's gonna have neutral safety, backup, lights. It's got pr provisions for a speedometer, electronic and mechanical. This thing is just the absolute ticket. I mean, I've wanted one now for like two freaking years. So uh, I guess I'm just happy to have it. We'll get over to the motor and we'll get that all kind of dialed together. I gotta look up the torque specs from ARP to make sure we get the flywheel bolted on there proper with its assembly loop. And then we'll just kind of start putting parts on slowly but surely. Okay, let's dial this flywheel together. So first step, rip all these junk uh, fasteners out. Now these are just the stock jobbies that held on the ring gear before. I didn't really torque or nothing. Just kind of hold that on there. Now, you want to make sure when you're putting this all together, you want to do crisscross applesauce. Now, this ARP deal, you can see it's longer, which is very common. Well, they're all longer on a uh, flywheel for a clutch versus a ring gear. The heads themselves are much bigger. So what we're going to do is it recommends some sort of Loctite. I give a part number two something, whatever on the threads, which to me means red Loctite. That's what I have. And then you take this assembly lubricant, which I've opened the wrong way. Gentle, gentle. What's going on here? What, what have I done? You want to put this under the how did I screw that up? I opened it up on both sides and it didn't open. That's awesome. You want to put this stuff under the head of the bolt. Ugh, man, I'm like trying to open a condom. Um, there you go. So you put this stuff under the head of the bolt. So when you're torquing it, I guess the friction or something like that is not affecting the torque itself. So we'll get these in just kind of finger tight. They should all be minty. So I'm gonna get all those in real quick doing the same exact procedure. I'll come back and I'll show you what we're gonna do uh, for Tarkin. You don't want this one coming apart. This would be bad. Okay, so we got all the bolts in with Loctite on stuff. Now again, the recommended torque and instructions is 85 foot pounds crisscross. So we'll set her to 50 just to get started. I don't know if you're supposed to do it in steps or not. Oh, of course I'm gonna, well, that one worked. I'm gonna wanna roll the motor over. That's not bad. Cool. Not gonna lie, it did run me with the little Dewalt. 
no uh, spark plugs in here. She's gonna be a little loosey goosey. Okay, we got this thing all dialed together. Next thing we got is the, this is actually a pilot bearing, which is kind of cool. So we're gonna go ahead and put this in. So this just goes in the center of the crank, and this is what the input shaft is gonna kind of ride on. So I wish I had a deep socket. I'm gonna have to get one. Basically, we're gonna put that in the crank, knock it in with a socket, and once it bottoms out, it's done, and that just supports the transmission, the input shaft. Once it is in there, I think we're gonna, I'm gonna get that taken care of and call it for tonight. I gotta still do title and all that stuff for this dang video I gotta put out tomorrow. Even though it's uploaded and ready to go. There's a lot more work to it than you might think. Um, and you know what, I don't wanna get the clutch and all that dialed because really we'll do the clutch, we'll do that, we'll put the bell housing on, we'll do all the measuring and I'll see if I can get a line made tomorrow. So if I can do that, then I am, uh, I think I'm home free. I just jinxed it. Okay, new day. Uh, before we go any further, I just want to thank all you guys. Everyone's been super cool in the comments. And I know I was worried when I did all this stuff. People are going to think I'm some sort of sellout and all that for buying all this stuff on the Visa card and figuring out how to pay for it later. There's a lot of items. and uh, But I think it's time my life I want a nice car. I think everyone's kind of getting, the, getting behind it. I really do appreciate that. Anyway, speaking of spending money, I went to the hydraulic shop and had another line made. So... 60 bucks that cost, rip off. But now what we're gonna be able to do is the drain or the bleed and the feed line can be through the bell housing and I don't gotta screw around with it. Now, if you're not quite understanding what I'm talking about there, just hang on, it'll all make sense soon-ish. Um, so, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna explain a little bit, talk it out, and hopefully we'll carry on. So the next steps, I gotta put the clutch and pressure plate in which is pretty simple. I gotta put that on the motor. Here we have the throw up bearing on. Now, the big concern is you want, I believe it's 150 thou, I'm, I gotta double check, of clearance between the throw out and where it's gonna ride on the fingers of the clutch. So that way it's not touching, but it has the right amount of travel. The way you get that, obviously this is going to be on the motor, bolted in, fixed, that isn't changing. What you do is you adjust this throw out bearing outwards with these shims. I believe these were 90 thou shims. So you just stack those up behind and it will slowly push that out until it's all correct. Now the way to measure that, we're going to do it, you uh, straight edge across here and we'll take our measurement that way and then once we get the clutch in we'll go from the bell housing to the clutch finger i believe do the math do the difference and make sure that's i think it was 150 thou don't quote me on that we'll get it 100 percent dialed together before we go and uh, and that's all you do it's very simple i was a little nervous about this i thought it was a little daunting but now that i'm doing it turn your brain off just make it happen We'll get the camera set up over there. We'll get the clutch in. I'll show you how we're gonna do that. Get it all dialed together. You want it nice and smooth with our tool. And then in theory, we get that. We get everything measured up. We'll call Murr. He came over today. He's been home for one day. One day Murr's been home. They're all looking at cars. Wasting my money. Okay, so we're at the engine. Uh, I gave this a quick wipe down with some brake clean. Just make sure we got a good meeting surface. Now, this is kind of heavy, so it's kind of hard to explain. You're going to have to bear with me while I put it in. But essentially what's going to happen, this is our clutch disc, which is, I guess this is the dual friction. It's got, it's different side to side. Anyway, it says flywheel side. So that is going to go on like that. And then the pressure plate is going to hold it in. Uh, it goes around it. Wraps it like a baby. So we're going to do that. Now, this flywheel... Looks like it's dual drilled for different size clutch. So uh, I don't know, they are 10 and 10 and 11 or 11 and 12, I don't know. Anyways, there's a small and big, this is what you need. Um, this is a small block dealy, the big blocks, or 454 I should say, would have a weight, but you can actually bolt that on. Uh, BW taught me that one. The next thing 
is we have this ARP hardware and it recommends 45 foot pounds, which is, I think kind of a lot, but it's what it recommends. Usually like Chevy, I think it's 25 or 35 or something like that, but we're following the instructions to a T. Uh, I'm putting just a little bit of thread sealer on it. Doesn't say you have to, but man, when it's this far in the motor and such a hassle to deal with, I can't imagine a little bit of thread sealer is gonna hurt. This is, I think Mer gave me this, it's orange. So it said around the package that it's uh, hybrid strength. It can be taken apart. Red is a bit of a hassle. So we'll get two in there just to kind of hold it. Ugh, and we'll see what happens. Oh man. So I have the bolts all just kind of started. I, I loosened them all so there's, I mean, there's a lot of play in there. And actually the clutch inside, I can move it around. Now this is where this alignment dealy comes into play. So <clears throat> this is basically like having the input shaft. Now you have to remember, the transmission is gonna go through here, through the clutch, and into the little pilot bearing. So you have to have it all aligned. Everything's about alignment on these stupid things. So there's this little tool. We're gonna do this, and it goes all the way in. So now that is spinning on that little uh, bearing we have in there. So we know the clutch is centered in the pressure plate. Pressure plate. Now once we torque all these down, it'll actually squish it all together. And then uh, everything will be held true when the clutch is coming in and out by the input shaft. So same thing with this, as everything else that's round or circular, you wanna kinda of walk it in, uh, you know, crisscross applesauce. So let's kinda of get everything snugged up and then we'll go around and uh, whatever I said, 45 foot pounds is the recommendation. So it's all torqued, just perfect. Now here is a really important part that comes out real easy, goes in easy. Eh? Eh? So now we know everything is perfectly aligned. Let me show, show you. You can see the bearing in there. So we're golden. In theory, the transmission should plop in there like nothing. We should be good. So next step, I got some brand new hardware. I'll put the bell housing on and then we'll start doing a little measuring. And mathematics, man, we're asking a lot out of me here today, or this couple of videos, I should say. Murr's here, so essentially he's just here to make sure when it's done wrong, I don't have 100% of the blame, just 50%. He's been home for 24 hours, we've gone and looked at a car, spent a bunch of money, and now we're screwing around in the garage. Support a senior. So, what we've done now, we've done the calculations once, we're just, Murr's just redoing it here. So, what you want to do is you want to take a straight edge, measure from your throw out to the case and get your measurement. You got one there. Okay, 3.793. 3.793. Yep. Some good writing I got there. So we did the measurements a couple different ways, but this is one we went with without a shim and it gave us a space of 214 thou. And you can see right here, do not shim left than 100 and no more than 200. And since we were 214, I took one of these, which are 90 thou, put a 90 thou shim behind, which you can see right there, which in theory, we're gonna remeasure the bell just to make sure, but we should be 124 thou, which is right in spec. So that's that. Now we'll show, Merle will show you how to do the bell housing. This one's a little hard to see, but in that little clutch, let me show you here. So these are your little clutch forks and they have a little kind of curvature. And right at the high end of the curve, that's where that bearing is gonna ride. So you use your straight edge, go across the bell housing, 
run it in until you hit the the little curve where it's going to run. Use your young eyes if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. So, so 390, 396. 3961. Yeah. So we're gonna take that. 3961. Yeah. Then we'll take our 3.961 minus 3.793.168. So we somehow we're in the we're in the wheelhouse. Yeah. But it didn't work out exact. We should be 0.124 based on these measurements. But that's, either way. Yeah, that's a bit out. It should have been. Do you think it was your glasses? Mm, can't be that. Let's I'll, let's review the bell housing. Maybe we went funny off the clutch. Round two. This is definitely, I think Murr is here and he's overthinking it. This is the main problem. So mm -hmm. we went through all the calculations again. Now, this wasn't seated all the way in. So we got, the, we put the shim in, we give it a whack with the rubber hammer. Now we're measuring straight edge off the uh, throw out to the case. And we got kind of 3.727, 3.734. So we kind of, 730 is probably about the average. The real issue we run into is with the stupid clutch forks. Because these things, depending on which uh, finger, I should say, sorry, not fork, we went to, the measurement changed slightly. So, we got some on the calculation box, some that were uh, 3.9930. The biggest one we got was 961. So this is the one that's kind of iffy. So when we do the math of 930 minus 370 gives us 20 even. That number, I, I think it's probably our average, probably closer to 940, 950 anyways. The goal being 150, so we're right on the extreme edge. So we have two options. Put another 90,000 shim in, which puts us right at the, the, the smallest amount, which will push the throw out towards the clutch, which we don't want, or we're on the ragged edge. Now we're, we're arguing over 100,000 at the end of the day. And I'm still thinking that that clutch, those fingers are not exactly 100%. So if we go with an average of a 940, 950, we're at, I mean, 180,000 or something like that. So we're gonna leave it where it is right now and uh, hope for the best. If it's a problem, we'll take it out. I'm sure it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Well, it's, as it wears, you wanna have the yeah. clearance in there. If you have it tight and it wears, your clearance will get less. So if we're on the wide side, as the clutch wears, the clearance decreases, it brings you closer to spec the more it wears. And my guess is it's gonna have a bit of wear on that clutch. I thought when you dump the clutch, there's no wear no on wear it. No wear at all. It's no. only when you slip it. It just wears the tires. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and manhandle this thing in. We've got the wide shot to get all the myrrh in it. <laughs> so I'll I'll just hold the whole train like it's gonna be tricky. I'll just grab the whole transmission if you want to kind of guide it and then the bolts are there. Alright. Oh, you know what you're gonna have to do is the these lines on yeah. the Yeah, to go through that hole. That's what I said. That's kind of sort of what it be on it. Okay, if you can push it in there, it's... Uh, I 
Just take a minute. You need to have. You gotta do the little tight here. Let's put the crane to the table. Why don't you put the... Yeah. Or, or I was going to say, just put, get your floor jack and put the tranny, like lower the whole thing down two feet and then put the put the transmission on your floor jack. Then you'll be able to move it around. Let's do anything other than what we were doing. Yeah. That's not... That's oh, nothing. moly. Okay, well I just about puked. So, we're going to go ahead... We're gonna block the hell out of you, I'm sorry, but we're using the the table and then the engine crane, and we're gonna try and do that, because that, it's way heavier than a four-speed Muncie. Okay, so I'm sweating. So we had to do, we got down the ground, we were moving around, I turned the camera off. I put a block of wood under the old pan and I bounced the tail housing up and down. Well, Mer slowly tightened the bolt. You never, ever, 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 Mer, say it ever, ever want to bring a transmission in by tightening the bolts on the ears. That's what we did. But Mer was just like, one finger on the rash, and as I would bounce it, it would go in. So clearly, and I didn't check this, so this is on me, the bell housing to the transmission is pretty freaking precise. So it was all clean, but maybe a little bit of a flap wheel or something. It would have made life just a little bit easier, but maybe that's how it is. These are so obsessed with being, like, they're only allowed to be five thou out around. Well, the, the front bearing retainer is a precision fit on every transmission. So it's just that everything is brand, brand new. Would have been good did you put Loctite on that bolt? I did put okay. Loctite on that bolt. Check your camera! Because I don't want to take this out again. <laughs> if this happens on Power Tour, I'm paying one of you suckers to do this work. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the next day where we left it last night. Well, mom and gentlemen, I wish for it to say that. But, uh, Man, this thing was a precision fit. Got her in. Uh, I was tired. I was so tired. After uh, manhandling this thing for, I don't know what I'm going to put in the editing there, but it was eight minutes I was holding that transmission. Whoo, 125 pounds. That was a lot. So I took two Tylenol and went straight to bed. Woke up today feeling great. Now, we're going to put this thing in. Now, I've already gone in there cut the old transmission mounts out. I did a quick measuring. They weren't going to match up. And you know what? This thing, uh, American Powertrain sent a Skookum uh, heavy-duty mount that'll be all kind of meant to go. So that's cool. I mounted the shifter. Upon looking at it, uh, I should have maybe clarified that when I said 1955 Chevy Nomad, I probably should have said bucket seats because that looks like a bench shifter to me. Man, the phone's going off like crazy collectors hasn't even been 30 days since i got this i shouldn't be calling yet i did a quick measurement from the motor mount to you know basically this now this shifter i don't know if i said it or not it can be here flipped 180 go here and i believe it can go there but i'm a tall guy and this measurement where it currently is to the motor mount puts it uh basically right in line with this bolt hole where the automatic shifter was so i should be able to kind of cut a square out of there to start and see what we got. I'd like to keep the hole drilling to a minimum or cutting to a minimum. And this is gonna be ugly, cutting through this tar shit. But uh, we'll cut that out and that'll actually, I mean, shifter will come up right here, right by the steering wheel. So I think it'll be perfect. Curve it back a little, go from there. Not to mention, we have a grinder and a welder, so we can do anything we want to the shift handle if it's not 100% correct. So really, if I get that hole cut, we should be able to slide this thing in bolt the transmission mount and all that together, get it kind of dialed, get it on the motor mounts, because I ain't changing nothing. 
and hopefully at least tack in the transmission. I might have to jack the back end up so the car is level to set the uh, angle of the motor and trans, but we'll get in there with the floor jack and tack weld and we'll kind of, we'll go from there. I'm sure it'll be self-installing. So complete change of plans. The car's down on the ground. I pushed it back. Um, we're going to get the motor trans that I've cut a hole in the tunnel where I hope it's going. I think it's going. Uh, I measured once and uh, cut twice. Um, so anyways, we're going to put it in there. We can put the motor mounts in. We then put a floor jack under the transmission, set the angle of everything. And I already have the mount on the transmission. I, it'll be close. I might be able to shimmy under there. You know, lost a few LBs. And uh, we'll mount this to the transmission. And all that it is, this bracket, it's got a couple of bolt holes, but I think I'm going to weld it. And it's infinitely adjustable. So we'll put it in there. Um, once we get it kind of dialed, I can tack these in, pull that out, whatever I got to do, jack it up. And it's irrelevant where we're at angle wise and secure this thing all together is my thought. So let's jam this thing together. Should go in pretty easy, right? Famous last words. I guy should really clean the floor. I make it? Not bad, not bad. This transmission is heavy. I wonder what an automatic transmission weighs. I guess they're probably heavy full of fluid, eh? All right, gentle. And really, once this is in, then we get to the fun part. We can start putting tunnel ram, all that stuff in. Oh, somebody put a hammer there. Idiot. Uh, so I slightly, slightly misjudged my cut by about an inch. And the second I did that, everything fell into place. So we'll go ahead. Where's my pry bar? Do I have one on here? Yep. We'll just go ahead and put these motor mount bolts in. Man, it's all, uh, all smoky in here. That uh, kill mats. Something else. Okay, we got the old girl in. Um, I got her three and a bit degrees tilted backwards. Now it's got, I don't think you wanna go off the carb plates. I think those can be tilted for like fuel slosh or whatever. So I went off this little machine flat boss. I assume it would be flat. And it's different than the carburetor, so it's gotta be. And honestly, that's about as high as we can go up in the transmission. If we have to do any other changing, it'll have to be in the motor mounts, which these ones, these are the, I think those are the tall guys. We could redrill those and drop down if we really have an issue, but I think it'll be fine. Transmission. I said I might, I might overcut just a little bit. What's in there, you know, it's kind of sticking out. I think that's fine. And right here's another plate. It's getting pretty close to the floor. So there's not much more up in the transmission we're going to go. And I mean, realistically, what's that? No, we have the oaks down there, so we should have lots of room. So we should be fine. I'm going to crawl in there just make sure we're golden. And uh, put a couple tabs on, weld them in. And Bob's my uncle. We'll see how it goes. Well, <laughs> the shifter's definitely, uh, it's got to be a bench seat dealy, but man. The, the throw is so short in this. Reverse almost feels like, like, that's it. I think. Must be. Oh, this is freaking sweet. We bang gears. So um, we got to modify this 
shifter. I mean, it really needs to be kind of a little shorter. I might have something I can just use, but this is fine for now. We're not going to do too much. Motor's in, the transmission is on the cross member. I just tacked it in in case anything does have to move when we get the rear end uh, in there. But once I lift it up on the hoist, we can get in there really welded good. I just got kind of four tacks on all four corners, so it'll hold it. I'm, uh, I'm very confident. I don't think we're doing much. There's no fluid in it. We got to do all the stuff in the motor. That is what I'm excited for. I mean, this was this is a pretty big moment. Now it's all under there. So we're waiting on the clutch yet. The clutch pedal, it's a whole assembly. We can get that all dialed together. But up next, we're going to pull the motor apart and intake manifold. So we're doing Tunnel Ram EFI, dual snipers. That's going to be a good one. Uh, I don't know if we're going to do... Yeah, we're going to do that. I at least have to have the intake manifold on there with the carburetor sitting on it carburetors sitting on it so it looks cool and motivates me with a couple of velocity stacks then we gotta do a whole new fuel system i do have that sniper tank stuff should start going together though at least at this point no more coming apart i say that famous last words until the whole thing has to come apart but i'm uh i'm rather confident so thank you very much for watching I'm so excited about this. Hopefully, a lot of people have been telling me this is, they've put an overdrive transmission in their car, this exact one, the TKX or, or T56. This was the best money they've ever spent. I really hope you're right, because they are not giving these away, but uh, hey, pays you can plan, right? Visa's there for you. Comment below, subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate it. It allows me to keep wasting money on junk like this, which I absolutely love, and uh, go on some road trips.